Okay, today's lesson is on inverse function. So the inverse can be written to when they use this negative power one. So if you have um, x, say for example, the inverse of x is x to the negative one, or you can say it's like saying one over x. So the inverse is doing that. So an inverse of a function, so if you have a function, so a rule, an inverse can be found if it's a one-to-one -one function. So remember, if we had our graph and we um, drew a line, a horizontal line, if it only crossed once, it was a one-to-one -one function. So only if it's a one-to-one -one function can we find the inverse. Okay, now, so the way we find the inverse is we get the rule. So you'll have like a y equals something, you know, to... We're going to do it in a minute, 2x plus 3. So what you do to find the inverse, you swap the y and x around and then rearrange it. So I'm going to do it here. So if I was finding the inverse of this function, what I will do is I'll swap. So normally it would have been, this is actually y equals 2x plus 3. So if I swap the y and x around, I'm going to have x equals 2y plus 3. And then what we do is we just keep rearranging it till we get a y equals again. So if I bring the 3 over, it would be x minus 3 equals 2y. And because I want y by itself, I'll move the 2. So it'll be x minus 3 divided by 2 equals y. So now that that's your inverse function. So we can just use it, um, set notation. And we write, instead of writing y, we'll write that. So the inverse function is x minus 3 over 2. Okay. So when we say the domain and range of a, the function, so if I go up here to the, our original function, the domain, because they didn't set anything, so it's a linear graph, so we can say real field, and so is the range. So this is not the best one to use because they're both the same. But... What happens is this becomes the domain of the inverse, whatever that one was, okay? And this will become the range of the inverse. So they sort of swap. All right, so um, with this one, because they're both right up, the real field, it didn't, you can't really see it. So another point to consider, if you have a point on your function graph, um, so say down here, we've got an example. So say we've got one, five then the point, if you have the inverse function, it will, the point, the, a point becomes the opposite scenario. So see how we flipped here, the x and y? So if one comma five is a point on the original function, then five comma one is a point on the inverse function. Um, and so that's what that's saying. So let's go on to doing, um, <coughs> Looking at the graph. So here in the green, I have drawn the... Um, so here in the green, I have drawn the original uh, an original function. So I've just drawn what it's like. So I've got a starting point. So here, you can see what I've done. If that point here was a point on the graph, then the opposite... So we've got 3, 1. So 1, 3 must be a point on the inverse function, so I've drawn it there. And when you graph the inverse function, it's actually a mirror image of the function in the line y equals x. So y equals x is here, this orange line. And it pretended like this is a mirror. So if this thing was looking at that, it, it would see the mirror image here. And so you can sort of sometimes, if you're given um a function drawn the graph and if you draw this y equals x line which is the diagonal that goes all the way through you can do the mirror image you can work out what the graph would look like okay oops so here there's a i've done an example so we did the function in um green so the function was y equals 2x minus 3 Okay, and we've drawn, so here we've done the y equals, sorry, the y equals x line. 
So if we can see, if we hit the mirror, you write on it, and then you can see it's mirror imaging here like that. But you can do points. So if you know, see, the, in the original function, the y-intercept was negative 3. So you've got a point there. So the opposite of that would be negative 3, 0. So I knew that was a point on my other graph. So if I find the intercept of this function, the intercept was 3 over 2. So 0, 3 over 2 must be another point on the graph. All right, and now just to practice finding the inverse function. So remember, originally it was 2x minus 3, but to find the inverse, we're going to swap x and y around, and then we'll get it. So we get x, it's, it's very similar to the one before, but x plus 3 x plus 3 divided by 2 equals y. So the inverse of this would be um, that. So x plus 2, no, oh, sorry, 3 divided by 2. Okay, so there's an example. All right, so let's find here. So let's do a couple more. Find the inverse function of the following, stating the domain and range of the inverse. Okay. So, if you, obviously, um, what you should do first um, is find the domain of the function. So, this one here. This. So, if you were thinking of this graph... So the domain of this function is here. We've been looking at that. They look right at here. So it is 1, 5. Okay. Now let's find the range of the function. So I just sub the values in. So what I'm going to do is find f of 1, which would be 3 minus 1, which is 2. And I'm going to find f of 5, which is 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. So the range is negative 2 to positive 2. There we go. So that's what numbers we're going to get. Because it's a negative graph, it would have looked like this. But they're saying to only look at the numbers between uh, 1 and 5 or whatever. So say that bit there. All right. Um, so we've done the domain and range of the original function. And the reason I did that is because if I go to find, sorry, the inverse now, so the inverse of x, so let's find the formula first. So I'm gonna swap where x and y was and I'm gonna rearrange. Now, because I want positive y, I bring, I'm gonna bring that over this and then I'm going to say all right move the thing all right so what we actually see here is the inverse function has the same formula but remember it's going to be set for a different domain so its domain is the range of the original. So the domain for this one is between negative 2 and 2. That's what the inverse function is. And the range is the domain of the original. So up there, so we're going to say 1 and 5. So even though it's the same, like remember we said, it's the same formula, but it's a different function because the domain's a different area. And what is happening is that the mirror, it, it's mirror imaging, so it looks the same. All right, so let's do this next one. All right, so here is the original. So we've got f of x. Oh, well, let's just do the domain because they, oh, they've listed it anyway, so that's easy. It's 1 to infinity. And let's work out the range. Well, I like to, sometimes I think I might like to uh, sketch this graph so I can work out 
the thing. Now it's a quadratic and it has a turning point of one and four. So it does like that and one and four. How did I know that? Because this up here is in turning point format. So there it is, and it's a positive quadratic, so it looks like this. So I can see, therefore, the range is, um, the smallest number is 4, and it goes on to infinity. All right, so now I'm going to try and find the inverse. So the inverse function, and I'm going to swap the x and y. So I would have x equals y minus 1 squared plus 4. So I'm just going to keep rearranging until I get y by itself. So I bring the 4 over, it'd be x minus 4 equals y minus 1 squared. Okay, then I'm going to bring the opposite to square, something to be squared is the square root, x minus 4. Okay, and then, um, so that's plus or minus equals y minus 1, and then we've got square root x minus 4 plus 1 equals y. Okay, so plus or minus, the inverse function is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 4 plus 1. And if I have to write the domain, the domain is the range of the original function. So we're going to say 4 to infinity. And the range is the domain up here. So I'll write 1 to infinity. Okay. All right. So that's um, inverse functions.